Today I'm going to be showing you how to print large objects on a small 3D printer. We're going to be printing a hand cannon from Fortnite. Let's get started. Ah! Ah! Back to back headshots, baby! Let's go! Oh my god. Woo! Hand cannon is one of my favorite guns in Fortnite. In this video, I'll be showing you how to download a file and modify it to make it life-sized for 3D printing. There are a couple great websites for 3D printing. One of them is Thingiverse, so I'm just gonna type hand cannon up here. And right here we have a pretty good model of a Fortnite hand cannon. Another great website is GrabCAD. Their library is very expansive and you can filter by types of files you wanna work with and different types of models. So we're gonna go back to Thingiverse and right now I'm just downloading the files. I'm gonna save them to our documents folder and extract them. In order to modify the step files, we're gonna be using SolidWorks, a 3D modeling platform. Check the link below to the file set that we're gonna be using in this video. So now that we imported the step file into SolidWorks, I'm gonna take a quick measurement and see how large it is. So we can see it's around six and a half inches in length. And I can see that there, it's missing this pattern. So I'm gonna quickly fix that by, by converting those sketches and then creating a cut to mirror it on the other side. So now we're gonna visually compare the SOLIDWORKS file to an image of the hand cannon in the game. We can see that there's a part line missing here but it seems that the outer surface of the model is good enough for 3D printing, so we're not gonna make any further changes to the outer surface. We can now work on getting it ready for 3D printing. The first thing I'm gonna do is make the SOLIDWORKS body life-sized. Under the Mold Tools tab in SOLIDWORKS, I'm going to select the Scale feature and select our body. I'm going to increase it by a ratio of around 1.6, which should give me the approximate size I'm looking for as a real life Desert Eagle is around 10 and a half inches in length. So we're using a Formlabs 2 printer that has a build volume of 5.7 by 5.7 by 6.9 inches. Now that our model is life-sized, we're going to have to split the main body into two pieces for 3D printing. To figure out into how many pieces I need to split the body into, I draw boxes that represent the build volume of our 3D printer, and that will show where part breaks need to occur. Under the direct editing tab, I'm gonna use the split feature. I'm gonna use the front plane and press cut part. And I'm gonna click on those two files and I'm gonna unclick consume cut bodies. And that's gonna give me two different solid bodies that now I can work on. By hovering my mouse over the part and pressing tab, I can make that part go away and be hidden. So now we're gonna shell the part in SOLIDWORKS. This allows us to decrease the amount of volume that we need to print while still giving us the outer surface and structural rigidity of the part. So we just did that for the barrel of the gun. Now for the handle, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So now we're gonna shell it to around 0.1 inches. I begin by making the lab joint by sketching on the split face plane. I'm going to offset entities by clicking on the face by the width of what I want left on the wall, in this case 1.5 millimeters. Now I'll exit this sketch. Do an extruded cut, select thin feature, select two direction. I'm going to make one direction equal to the clearance that I want between the tongue and the groove, 0.1 millimeters in this case, and I'm going to make the depth of the cut five millimeters. Now I'm going to make the tongue on the barrel by selecting the same sketch to save time. I'm going to select the extruded boss feature and click on thin feature and use one direction. I'm going to go one millimeter inside and make it go up to body.
For the second direction of the extruded boss, we're going to go up 4.5 millimeters. Now we have a lap joint using one sketch with a clearance of 0.1 millimeters. By changing the color of one body and taking a cross section, you can see how the tongue and groove joint will allow the two bodies to fit together. Now we're going to save the bodies as STL files for 3D printing. By hiding the barrel in SOLIDWORKS, when I save as an STL file, only the handle will be saved. When saving the part as an STL file by clicking Options, we can increase the resolution of the STL file. By increasing the resolution, we can achieve a better print with smoother surfaces. Now I'm going to hide the handle and show the barrel and repeat the process of saving as an STL file. Once we have the saved STL files, we can import them into Preform, the Formlabs print preparation software and orient them for printing. By dragging the STL files into Preform, we can orient them and add supports that are necessary when there are overhangs in the 3D print. By orienting the parts with the tongue and groove feature normal to the surface of the build platform, we can avoid the generation of supports along this feature. This will allow for a smooth fit. Now we're gonna upload the job to our printer and begin the print process. Here's a quick time lapse of our printer in action. Once the print is complete, the build platform is removed and the 3D parts are cleaned. The part is removed from the build platform and the supports are then carefully removed by hand. Remember to wear gloves when working with 3D printed parts before they cure, as there may be uncured resin that will be sticky to the touch. This is what the barrel looks like once the supports are all cleaned up. Once our 3D printed part is clean, we put it in a bath of an isopropyl alcohol solution and let it soak for about 15 minutes to get rid of any uncured resin. After 15 minutes in the IPA solution, the parts are then removed and set to cure in the sun or under a UV light. Once the parts have cured, we can begin to sand them for painting. In order to bring the two parts together, we're going to use an instant adhesive. We're going to insert the barrel into the trigger and let it rest for it to dry. Then we can paint the gun. We give it a nice legendary gold finish. Here's a look at the finished product. As you can see, we were able to turn a downloaded model into a life-size model, break it into pieces, create a tongue and groove joint, print and assemble.